far down the rabbit hole do you want to go? Welcome to Quantum Factor, the show that explores the nature of reality and the mysteries of the mind. I'm your host, Alison Hill. Tonight's special guest sparked a revolution of thoughts with the hit movie, What the Bleep Do We Know? Bringing quantum physics and other new and exciting concepts into our everyday lives. What the Bleep Do We Know? is the creative vision of William Arntz, a research physicist and software developer who focused his energy on producing and directing a new and unique style of cinema. Over the next half hour, we'll have an opportunity to discuss with William Arntz the ideas presented in this groundbreaking film, What the Bleep Do We Know?, and his newest cinematic release. William, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Well, thanks for having me. Well, a lot of people have seen What the Bleep Do We Know?, and it's a, it's a story, it's a documentary, it has excellent animation. But for those who may not have seen the, um, the movie, how would you explain it in a nutshell? Uh, in a nutshell? In a nutshell. Oh, man, I've been trying this for two years. I mean, it's... Okay, first off, the subject matter, it's about highest level science and spirituality right. and how they seem to be coming more together than they have over the past three or four centuries. So some of it is about that. And, of course, once you get into weird sciences, now we're talking quantum physics because that's, in some respects, the strangest of all. So it's about that, but it's also about... Um, we get into some neurology how the brain patterns and how that affects how we experience reality. We also get into sight and perception, the fact that everything you see around you, you think reality is out there, but really it's being built inside your mind. It's being your, your brain is what sees, not your eyes. So we get into that concept about reality. Uh, we get into emotions and how emotions affect everything and some microbiology that's come out uh, about that, saying how we get addicted to emotions. And so it's about all those subjects. We talk about the concepts of God and how that's evolved through the ages. Um, so that's, it's not a nutshell, it's kind of a buffet. So it's a pretty revolutionary um, in style, formats, and in, um, in content as well. What kind of response did you get to the movie, and what kind of response were you initially anticipating? Well, the response from the movie has been all over the map. You, On the one hand, you have people who say, this is, uh, one of my favorite ones is people say, you know, oh my God, you know, I always kind of thought this way, but I never really knew that anyone else did. I always thought I was crazy. And it's so clarified the way that I always kind of thought the world was. So you get that on the one side, then you get right. the other side where people say, well, it's all hogwash, and you people are just a bunch of, you know, new age mystical hooey. And we sort of have everything in between. But I think it's brought up a lot of people, a lot of like-minded people out of the closet, if you like, or out of the woodwork, um, you know, because mm -hmm. you go to parties now, and quantum physics is, uh, is a topic of conversation, whereas... Um, Possibly before the movie, it may not have been. I think people are more comfortable now, maybe talking about these things. Well, or people would that always, be fair? Yeah, people always say, you know, why? Why did you make the movie? And there's like ten reasons. One of the reasons was that in this culture, in our society, if you have, let's say, more mystical or more spiritual uh, views about this, you're often treated as a wacko. If you meditate, like ten years ago, if you told people that you meditate, they thought you were a wacko, and you know you put a turban Absolutely. around your head and, mm -hmm. and you were strange, and so you couldn't talk about that at work because you'd be ostracized, you know, very much. Um, you know, I studied in a couple of spiritual groups, and they were always classified cults. So one of our thing was to get people out of the metaphysical closet because another email we get a lot, people say the lights would come up, and they'd realize, oh my God, there's. 300 people in the movie theater, and most of them are smiling. They agree with us. I thought I was alone. So it's really let people, um, uh, you know, discuss out in the, which is part of the reason why we wanted in theaters. We wanted to get people out of the, the uh, living rooms 
and get them out in public where you'd see some of these ideas really in some respects for the first time. So um, we'll take a quick look at a trailer coming up in a few minutes, but um, why did you go the documentary route and intertwine it with a story? And then um, I, I like, actually, I like that. Uh, it's a new genre. It's, it's something absolutely unique, I think. But I think it works very, very well. Did you start out thinking that way, or did that sort of develop? Or? It, both. We, right. You know, when I, the initial scripts I wrote, it was mostly documentary with some little skits in it to right. sort of illustrate things. And then um, Mark Vicente joined. There was three of us who really put the film together. Mark Vicente joined, and he said, you know, all these skits you've written, they, let's give it a through line. And he's like, oh, good idea, Mark. So we give a through line, and then we had the, the character kind of emerged out of that. And part of the reason we did that is we wanted it to be a theatrical film. Right. For a theatrical film, you basically have to take people through an emotional you know, first act, And it illustrates act. some of the science that they're talking about as well. Exactly. Yeah. So people, you have to personalize it to do that. So that's really how uh, we did it. And also, we realized it's sort of the, the famous line from the uh, Bible, don't put uh, new wine in old skins. <laughs> so if you're going to put some new ideas out there, it's best to do it in a new uh, format because that kind of jars people a little bit. They don't they don't really know what to expect next. And I think you've um, you've put it in a, especially with the brain chemistry um, and the the cell parts in the mm -hmm. wedding. I loved that bit. It was uh, it was very interesting. And for somebody who's not a scientific expert like myself, um, it really brings it down to the basics, and it's very very easy to uh, mm -hmm. to understand. Um, I like that bit. Um, it was, was that your idea as well, or was this a uh, sort of a combination? Of well, it was all a combination. Who knows, you know, because a lot of times we would um, play tennis with an idea. Someone yeah. would have an idea, and you say, well, that's stupid, but I could see it like this, and it bounced back and forth. But part of it, the, the, like the wedding scene, we wanted to have some fun because, you know, you're talking about God and spirituality and quantum physics. You can get very serious, and I think, you know, part of the trouble is you get very serious, and first off, it turns people off. Secondly, a lot of people go, well, they're serious now. I can't understand it. And I think one of the appeals of the movie is we did put the science in a certain way with the animation and whatnot, so that people go, oh, that's oh, what it means. <laughs> I can I can understand. And people Absolutely. got really high because they said, you know, I always thought I was an idiot about science, but. This makes sense. Well, it absolutely did. I mean, it, br it broke it down, and um, and when you think about it, it's pretty simple. You know, your emotions control, um, your emotions uh, change your brain chemistry, right? Can right. you talk about that a little bit, and then we'll we'll take a look at the, at well, the trailer. Well, we interviewed Candace Pert in in the film, right? And Candace uh, was the one who made the discovery that there's receptor sites on the cell, right? And she was trying to find out how opiates like um, uh, morphine and heroin work. It's this chemical docks in these little receptor sites on the cell. And that's what gives you the feeling of, you know, the elation from that. Right. Then she realized, oh my God, if these receptor sites are there, what are they for? Because they, they, you know, God didn't put them there for morphine; it's for an internal morphine or uh, the endorphins. You know, we all heard about right. that in right. So then, you know, you, people started thinking, well, wait a minute, if you can get addicted to morphine because of the way that it sits in receptor sites and what a, the chemistry that it causes, how about the internal ones that we're generating? Can you get addicted to that? The answer is yes. So when you go to that, you say, well, the same mechanism that gets you addicted to any drug can get you addicted to any emotion. And in fact, there's no difference on a biochemical level. And this is, to me, this was just when I first read this. Is this new? Is, is this a new concept? Or? Well, the receptor site stuff came out, oh, 15, 20 years ago. Right. But the fact of actually someone saying you can get addicted to your emotions. Now, spiritual people have been saying this for, you know, the yeah. Buddhists say the cause of all suffering is attachment to desire. You can also say addiction to emotions, the same thing. So this is one of these places where the, the spiritual world and the scientific world are starting to go a bit like this. Yeah, I think that's the beauty of the movie. I think that's what the movie did. It uh, sort of integrated science and uh, spirituality. Well, it took a first step. Yeah. There's a lot of integration <laughs> that needs to be done. Right, yeah. right. Well, um, let's take a quick look. This is the trailer um, for the original What the Bleep Do We Know? Let's take a look. Quantum physics, power of thought, modern materialism, what God was. What is reality? It's reality. It's looking at a big holodeck. Inside of your head. Different levels of truth. You okay? 
I heard you scream earlier. Was it another dream? Quantum physics. Pure consciousness. The cell, the molecules of emotion. The brain is made up twice by consciousness. Like a particle. Fantasy. Why do we hear? Makes you wonder, doesn't it? So that was the trailer for What the Bleep Do We Know? And I'm here on Quantum Factor with creator, filmmaker, William Arndt. So, William, um, you interviewed, for, like I said on the trailer there, uh, 14 scientists, mystics, and uh, scholars for the movie. How did you go about choosing them? Well, it was a combo. Um, some of the people, some of the scientists were people that Mark and I had read books about over the years and liked. Um, some were people that we had, Candace Bird, I saw it at a lecture. Right. Um, Ramtha, who's one of the interesting people in that, um, Mark and Betsy uh, and I were students at Ramtha's school. Right. So, and Ramtha's the teacher there. So um, we approached Ramtha about being in the film, said yes. Um, and that's how we got them. So it was really a, a combination of things. Some people, uh, David Albert, I found by just surfing the internet because I wanted someone talking about time and quantum physics, and he had written a book on it. So right. we contacted him, and so it was a combo play. I see people like uh, Fred Allen Wolf. Um, I love him because he says uh, quantum physics is the physics of possibility. I mean, that opens many doors to a mm -hmm. lot of people. And give, I think what, um, what the movie did for a lot of people was empower them. Um, well, that, that was one of our big, that's again, one of the things we did because the concept about you creating reality, which is one of the big things we talk about in the film, that is incredibly empowering. And, you know, in our society today, you're, it's not really an empowering society. I mean, people, the, the the news looks horrible, and it's like, you know, stay in your house and you're a victim and you protect yourself, and advertising is telling you what's going to make your life good, not that you could actually do it. So the idea that you create your reality, although mystics, again, have been talking about this for centuries, in this day and age is a revolutionary concept. So how exactly, I know there was, um, uh, Joe Dispenza was talking about um, creating your day, and of course when they were talking about the brain chemistry, is that you can actually rewire your brain um, as well as, so it, they're talking about how thoughts are powerful and that we've forgotten about that in our society. And let's talk about that a little bit, the power of thought. Well, this, um, and actually we get into this in the, more in, into the, the new movie, the Down the Rabbit Hole movie, right. but it's the idea that, um, a thousand years ago, the idea that thoughts affect things it wasn't wasn't so crazy. But what happened was about 400 years ago, we had the split between the church and science. Right. You know, the dualism and the material age was born, and so the idea was the church took the unseen world, and science took the physical world, and never the twain shall meet. So because of that divorce, that separation, um, a lot of people got thinking, well, what goes on in here has no effect out there. They are completely separate and never the twain shall meet. And what quantum physics sort of pried open the door on was saying, well, wait a minute, it seems like the out there, out there world is affected by the in here, in here world. And that's, so really I think a lot of it's historical, that there, there's this thing that, that this doesn't affect that. So how powerful are thoughts then? Um, we, we can change our own reality or everybody else's or is it just ours? Well, this is interesting. In the, in the first movie we got into the concept of, you, we introduced you create your reality. Right. Now, that's one of those subjects, it's like talking about anything. Let's say talking about music. It's something that, 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 that goes on and on and on. Creating reality, yeah, because people say, well, wait a minute, if I'm creating reality, am I creating you? Am I creating that cup? You know, what's the level on that? And if five billion people out there are thinking one thing and I'm thinking something different in the world, does that mean it's going to show? There's a lot of nuances to this whole creating your reality thing. Um, there has been, though, some uh, experiments that have come out now where there does seem to be a pretty causative link between people's intending things to happen and affecting the quantum field. And it's, it's a bit more powerful because a lot of people have, have um, used the power of positive thinking and, and concepts like that. But I think what you're talking about in the movie is a little bit more intense than that. You have to um, really, really focus on what you want. Because people might say, oh, well, I created my day today and I said it was going to be wonderful and it wasn't, so it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. How, what would you say to somebody like that? Well, it, first off, it's 
what is wonderful. Okay, so you could say, let's say, um, uh, you know, I read this book where this guy was was saying that um, he he was going to do something and something quote unquote bad happened. And it's like, oh, it was horrible. And then he found out if he would have done the thing that was good, something worse would have happened. Right. So half the time when something bad happens, and sometimes something bad is actually the best thing for you. You know, it's one of those things you have something horrible happen in your life, and three years later you go, oh, my God, that was the best thing. So it really, when you say, also the idea of you say you creating your reality, which you? Are you talking about the physical body you? Or are you talking about the personality? Are you talking about the spirit or the soul? So there's, see what I mean? There's a lot of nuances yeah, to the absolutely. create your day. but. The thing about power, the people say the power of positive thought, what I often think of is not the power of positive thought, it's just the power of thought. So if you're, that's what we talk about the movie, if you have a lot of bad things happening to you, one thing that I do is when that happens, you say there must be some emotion, because you're addicted to emotion, right. there must be some emotional payoff. So if bad things are happening, maybe it's because you want people coming up and going, oh, Allison, that's too bad, oh, you should. Mm. And you start because, enjoying the, the the attention or the right. physical rush. Or yeah, some people chemical enjoying, rush, right, right? Of people like oh, da da da, yeah. and you get to feel like so a the victim. victimization, right. right? And it can apply to all kinds of um, feelings and emotions, right? Right. And so, um, so when uh, you know when you're creating your day, do you create your day, by the way? Well, you know, I'm <laughs> I'm kind of bad about that. I um, when I get up in the morning, part of the idea of creating your day. Um, and the create the day thing was something that the Joe got because he was going to the Ramtha school too. Okay. And that's something that's taught there. That's something that you know. And there's a whole teaching about that. And and part of it, I'll just briefly mention is when you first wake up, it's like the world is still fuzzy. You haven't remembered who you are. Do you right. ever have the thing of like something horrible happens in your life and you wake up and you feel good and suddenly you remember you cracked up your car and then you feel horrible? Absolutely. <laughs> it's because what happened yeah. at that moment is you reboot your your personality, you bring it all back in. If you can lay in a new dream before you do that, then that's a really powerful moment. So what I do, I don't necessarily create my day, but I create the future. You know, I think right. sometimes I think about, um, like now I'm working on the new release for the film, so I'll wake up and I'll just see it playing in movie theaters and that kind of stuff. <laughs> so I don't, I don't create the day. I create something in the future. I just don't. So you visualize it. it. It's, it's yeah, or think about it, or sometimes right. I just, I just sort of hang out in, in the feeling of that being reality. Right. Um, well, you know, the nature of reality is uh, is uh, a big thing that uh, throughout the movie, it's the thread of the movie, like you said earlier. Um, but towards the end, um, I think it's what is really interesting when they're talking about the concept of God. Mm -hmm. Now, um, obviously, that's uh, you know, and, and also who is God, um, who are we, and where do we all fit in in this uh, great world? Mm -hmm. um, and um, what I liked. Um, Specifically about that um, was basically all the all the all the interviewees talked about it, and they all had, um, and they all were not sure who God was, mm -hmm. and um, some even said, like Ramtha said, "You're all God." Mm -hmm. let's, let's talk about the concept of God a little bit, and what did Ramtha mean by that? Maybe well, we should preface who Ramtha is, maybe first of all. Well, um, Ramtha Ramtha's in the film, and Ramtha is a channeled being, and and the the person you see in the film is Jay Z Knight, and right. Jay Z Knight <clears throat> channels Ramtha, and what what channeling the way that she does it is she and Ramtha have some sort of agreement. Ramtha's a non-physical being, and she I wouldn't say goes into a trance, but she just quiets down, and then she has experience in being yanked out of her body. She sees the tunnel of light, and she goes down that people talk about when they have near-death experiences. She's there for about a second. She starts feeling heavy. <laughs> back in the body. Meanwhile, back in the body, Ramtha has been talking for eight, ten hours and teaching and doing the thing. Right. Jay-Z has no memory of what, what has gone on. So that's that's what channeling is. Um, Have you met Ramtha? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, well, I was the one, yeah, you yeah, I was the one interviewing yeah. Ramtha. So yeah. when he's like leaning in, talking about being addicted <laughs> to emotions, that was me he was talking to. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, that was quite, quite so something. You got a personal lesson. Oh, that. yeah, that was, that was quite the experience. Um, and, you know, part of the reason, aside from, you know, Ramtha being a, a teacher and the things says is amazing, right. um, part of the reason it's interesting to have in the film is one of the uh, things we say in the film is that there's a reality beyond the physical reality. Yeah. So instead of just talking theoretically, now we have in this a being that doesn't have a physical body, 
um, and exists outside of the physical realm. And it's kind of it's kind of like introducing that into the film itself. How people reacted to that? Well, it's Constantly. interesting. It's to love or hate. Yeah. People e either we usually we get emails where people will say, "Oh my God, that's just amazing." You know, this who is who is the the woman scientist? <laughs> um, you know, in the red thing. We're like, well, <laughs> long story on that. Or some other people say, "Oh my God, that just that." that person just creeped me out. And it's usually one or the other. And sometimes... And you get the disbelievers. So. <laughs> well, then, well, then sometimes you get people who at first really liked it, then you say it was a channeled being, and then they, they flip totally and then hate it, which, of course, then shows you something about how your thoughts change your perceptions. But, you know, it's usually one or the other. Right. And then um, when, when, he, he, when he said, um, you are gods, or whatever mm -hmm. he says, or you're gods in the making, what do you mean by that? What does that mean for us? Um, well, how does that change us? Well, think about, I mean, a lot of the picture, um, that's not such an odd concept if you're a, a, a Hindu. Right. But in the, in the Western world, particularly the Christian world, that whole idea, you're born sinners. You know, you're born disgusting sinner, you know, you, the, the whatever, you know, God's mistake, basically. And then, you know, maybe if you're good enough, you won't fry forever. I mean, that's a very disempowering concept. And what Ramtha says... And, you know, many other beings have said, it's like, no, everyone's God. Everyone is God. In fact, everything is God. And so to say that you're separate from it, to say that God's out there judging is wrong. And But when you think about it, if you treated everyone like they were God, if everyone treated everyone like they were God, just think how the planet would change. I mean, that alone, not to mention the fact that it's probably true. Plus, people would not give their power away to some other... other someone or other, some other. being that you can't even see, right. um, that gives people a lot of, I don't know, help, or, right? <laughs> or give your power away to, you know, the, the, the church, religion, yeah. or to, you know, or to whatever, you yeah. know, any any organization. I mean, Absolutely. you see it, it's not just religion that, that does this, political systems do it, mm -hmm. you know, et cetera, et cetera, where you give, you know, they're always trying to give your power away so they can stay in the driver's seat. Now, um, I know um, you've had some good, um, you know, you have some good feedback um, mm -hmm. from the movie. What about criticism? Um, let's talk about that. How have the scientists um, responded to the movie? Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, it's, again, it's one thing about this film. It's one thing or the other. We've had um, certain physicists, you know, heavy-duty quantum physics, mm -hmm. saying, wow, this is, this is really interesting. I had one friend said that they were at a um, cocktail party after the movie came out, and there was two Ph.D. physicists, and they, th he, they thought they were going to get into a fist fight. <laughs> they were so you know, argumentative about that. And an interesting thing, people think who aren't in science, they think that science is like, well, everyone agrees. This is the way it is. Right. And, you know, the, you drop the cup, it will fall. Everyone Not agrees. Debatable. and yeah. yeah, yeah. It, but it turns out, especially in, in the, the fringes of science, quantum included, it's incredibly debatable. And we had a, a conference that we did um, about a year ago. And we invited most of the people who had been in the film that we interviewed there. And some of them were got in a violent disagreement about certain things. And it was interesting because the people out in the audience were, because they didn't know that the scientists disagreed. And it was interesting for them because then it throw because one of the other messages in the movie is like, you have to decide for yourself. You know, we'll present all this stuff, but don't because someone has a PhD behind them. Yeah. That you know, you still have to decide what's true for you. And that's the that's the power of quantum physics. Is everybody's science, right? It, it, it involves you. It's not just the scientists. It involves everybody. The Although, layman like me or it's anybody true, else, right? Yeah, I um, so, I was over in. Uh, France, and I did an interview with BBC because we were releasing the movie over in England. Right. And they had a couple uh, scientists on, and they, they had this set up where it was an ambush. And they, they didn't tell me. Suddenly, these PhD comes in, and one guy, one scientist was furious. How dare we present quantum physics in such a way? How dare we use the word superposition? And it just kind of cracked me up because it was like, it was kind of like another priesthood. They didn't like us using um, their terms. He said it was, it was irresponsible to present quantum physics. Well, let's, uh, we've got about three minutes left. Let's talk about the, um, you've got a new version of the movie coming out. Mm. Uh, what the bleep down the rabbit hole, am I correct? Right? Yeah, and it's, it's out it, right now. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm it's out right it, now. Yeah. It, just, it just opened uh, February 3rd. Right. And it started off as, um, we called it, we started calling it the rabbit hole version. Right. But it ended up like the movie changing into something completely different. And the, the dramatic scenes are still sort of there. 
But we went and re-interviewed everyone. So we have like um, an hour and a half, more than an hour and a half of new interviews. We took all the old interviews out, re-interviewed people, interviewed new people, put all that in, and have 20 minutes of new animation. Did you did you uh, still include the story? The story yeah, the story is in there. Right. Okay. Although we took some scenes that had been deleted, didn't get in the first one, we put them right. in, and we rearranged everything. Okay. So it's kind of like this deja vu. And we really, it's similar, but things like uh, the thing about we create our reality, we talk about it in more depth. And we also, it's more scientific. We have more of uh, the quantum physics, the double slit experiment is in there. Right. And certain experimental evidence, how the mind affects matter, we have in there. So it's a much more scientific approach. Right then, and uh, if you want more information about the new movie or the original version, please go to www.whatthebleep.com for more information. And, um, well, you know, I think this movie was an inspiration to many people, um, including myself, and um, I've watched it many, many times, and I'm sure, I'm sure I'll watch it again. Um, I think it was very timely. I think people maybe are, are, are tired of the mediocre entertainment. I mean, this was a little bit more than entertainment. This was, um, like, like we were talking about earlier, it empowered people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's inspirational, and especially, you know, um, we've got the potential. It gives people potential. And it gives people possibilities. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're talking about quantum physics, um, it, it's pretty debatable. It's open, and it's still a theory. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Well, that? quantum it, physics in all science. You know, there was a very famous physicist that said back in the 1900s, "Physics is dead because we've discovered everything." Right. And and now they found they're just scratching the surface. And I think this is going to go on for as long as humans are around. I mean, the the quest for knowledge to find more and more about how the universe works is just, and you get to deeper levels. And once they get out of the materialism and get to the other realms, it's it's a whole new ball game. Yeah. And um, I'm sure people will go and see the new movie and get a lot more out of it as well. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, William. Thanks for doing the movie, and uh, thanks for talking to us on My Quantum pleasure. Factor today. Um, that's all the time we have on Quantum Factor tonight. Uh, thanks to our guest and to you at home for watching. I hope that you are also inspired by the ideas explored in this movie, and I hope you realize also just how powerful you really are. Mm -hmm. Have a great night. Thanks again, William. Yeah. Thanks again.